sense. I don't either. Got it. That would be good. Good. That one was easy. Yeah. Is it factory? Like it's, it's the common denominator. Okay. That's why we went back to, to the basic foundation stuff. Okay. We good? Okay. So if you good. Okay. All right. Um, that really is the first section. Okay. That's section 9-3. Then what happened on section 9-4 was where things started falling apart. Because 9-4 you are getting a common denominator. Now, you're not solving anything yet as far as you don't have an equal sign and two sides of the equation, but you have, you're adding and subtracting. Up to this point, we're multiplying and dividing. It was when we began to add and subtract that things began to fall apart because it was trying to find a common denominator. So we're gonna back up to some of the, the easier problems and see if we can work our way back up, okay? Do we understand that just like um, just like with a fraction without any variables, if I had one-third plus one-fifth, I would have to find a common denominator. That's the only way I can do it. Unfortunately, we're calculator dependent, which means sometimes we're just putting it in our calculator. So we're changing from multiplication and division to addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction requires a common denominator if you have fractions. So... Addition and substitution. Do what? Addition and substitution. Oh, substitution. Yeah. Let's see if I can get to some problems here. Okay. Um, let's do... I feel like that's a hard one. Let's see if I can find an easier one. Okay, let's do this one. We're going to warm up. Okay, if you looked at that one, and you looked at the denominator, y'all know the denominator's the bottom, right? I think sometimes I assume that you guys are using the same terminology and you might not be. Okay, common denominator means the bottom of each fraction. In this case, it's the same. So I don't have to go through the effort of finding a common denominator. I just put down the denominator on the bottom. But look, you have a subtraction. You have to distribute that subtraction to both numbers behind it. So I have a 2x plus 5 minus a 6x plus a 3. Is everybody with me? Okay. Minus the 6 plus the 3. You distributed the negative. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Okay. Um, then I combine like terms. So I have an 8x plus an 8 over an x minus 1. Now, if you, oh, wait a minute, that's not 8x. Right? Okay. Um, I could, if I wanted to, I could factor out a 4, or I could factor out a negative 4. So if I factor out a negative 4, I'm going to get um, x minus 2 over x minus 1. Either one of those is acceptable. Okay, you don't have to factor it more. Um, if, if something will slash out, yeah, you would have to factor it more. But if it won't, you can leave it where it is. Okay. Um, all right, we good on that, right? Common denominator, we just apply the numerators. Okay, we add or subtract straight across. But we don't always have a common denominator. Um, let's look at this one. I think once you get this, then the last section would be easy. <coughs> Alright, what's the problem here? The minus sign of one. These, these things are switched. Okay, now we're, we're going to actually save ourselves some problems if we factor out a negative one out of one of them. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you factor it out of, so Ren, choose. Are we gonna factor it out here or factor it out there? Uh, left. Left, okay. So we're gonna factor out here. So if I factor out a negative one, then I have a negative one times negative x plus three. Okay, now that and that match, do they not? 
If I just switch those two things around, it would be the same thing as that, right? So I have Okay, so now they have a common denominator, but I've got this little one right here that's bothering me. Because if I, I could go ahead and I could multiply that side times negative one too if I wanted to, but it's easier if I have a negative one to throw it to the top and get rid of it off the bottom. All it does when I throw it to the top is it changes those signs. So this becomes a negative five X. It's like I'm dividing that by negative one. This becomes a negative four. And then I have it over, and I'll go ahead and switch the order so it looks the same. Now they have a common denominator, right? So all I have to do is combine the like terms on the top. So on the top I have a negative 2x minus 5, because I have this and this, and then that and that. And on the bottom I have a 3 minus x. Okay? Is that... Did I lose anybody? I did. Okay. Um, back it up. Okay. Do we see that those match, but they're in the wrong order? Okay, so to make them go in the right order, I'm going to factor out a negative one out of one of them. It does not matter which one. Okay, Ren chose the one on the left. So when I factored out the negative one, it changed that to a negative. So this times this gives me an x. This times this gives me a minus 3. So this right here really matches that. It's just written in a different way. But then I go, well, you know, I want the bottom to have the 3 minus x. So I, I kind of get rid of that negative 1. And the way that I do that is I divide those top two numbers by <coughs> negative 1. Okay? Because right now, I have that. Does it matter if I switch that? Is 1 over negative 1 the same as negative 1 over 1? Isn't it? Sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that. So this becomes a 1. This becomes a negative 1. Then I just distribute. So that becomes a negative 5x, negative 4. Okay? Now I have a common denominator. I did away with my negative 1, and I just combine the like terms on the top. Okay? Now are we good? Okay. Um, all right. So that's one type of problem here. Um, let's do another one. And then I'll give you what to do. Okay? All right. Let's say I have this. 5x over x squared plus x minus 6 plus x plus 7 over x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, what am I going to have to do? Factor. I'm going to have to factor. Okay, now that's been pretty consistent throughout this. Okay, that if there's something that can be factored, I'm going to factor it. Okay, I cannot do anything with a 5x. But this is a trinomial, so I'm going to unfoil it. Please understand, that is not a math term, unfoiling. But it may, should make sense that what we're doing is the opposite of foil, so we're going to call it unfoiling. What's going to go in those first spots? X and X. That's the only choice I have, because X times X is X squared. Then for the 6, I can multiply these two things together and get 6. So let's give it a try. What do we want to use? Six and one. We could try 6 and 1. Then when I do outside, I get 6X. When I do inside, I get 1X. Is there any way? It's going to have to be 2 and 3. Because, do we understand why this doesn't work? Because when I add these two together, there's no way I get 1X. So, um, Ren's right, it's going to be 3 and 2, because those are two more things that I can multiply together and get 6. Outside is going to give me 2x, inside is going to give me 3x. I need a positive 3x out of this when I add these. So what needs to be positive and what needs to be negative? The 2 needs to be negative, the 3 needs to be positive. Do we get that? Okay, so positive, negative. And when I do the last, it gives me a negative 6, so it works. Okay, so then I'm going to come over here. Can't do anything to the x plus 7. Okay, I'm going to factor that. x, x, what can I multiply together and get 4? 2 and 2. Now, I want a negative 4 out of it. So if these are both negative, it gives me the negative 2x plus the negative 2x, right? Okay, so far so good. Okay, 
Next thing I have to do is find the common denominator. So I'm going to look, I'm going to use my eyes, and I'm going to compare this one to this one. And I'm going to go, do they have anything in common? <clears throat> do they have anything in common? X minus 2. X minus 2. So I'm going to write down here, I'm going to write the X minus 2 down here for this one. And I'll write it down here for this one. Okay, now I personally would probably just go ahead and make one big problem with a common denominator, but I want you to see it, okay? So once I've written the x minus 2 down, I'm going to dot it out, okay? Then everything that's left up here that isn't dotted out becomes a part of the common denominator. So this has to have an x plus 3, and it has to have another x minus 2. This, so therefore, what am I going to do? I've got, I've got two of those, okay, so that matches like that, right? Okay, well actually let me write this all down first and then we'll come back. Okay, so we found the common denominator. Okay, so everybody with me on that step as far as the common denominator. I wrote down what they had in common and then I wrote down what was missing on both of them, okay? Are we good? Okay. So here and here became a part of the, con the common denominator. These two things have to match. Now I go back and I compare with my eyes. I have that. Oh, I see both of those there. What is missing right there? If I compare this to this, what's missing? X minus two. The x minus 2. Which means I have to multiply the top times the x minus 2. Okay? Yes? No. Okay. All right. Then I look at this one. I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. I come down here. What do I not have here that I have here? X plus 3. The x plus 3. So therefore, x plus 3 and x plus 3. Now understand, I'm just writing it here, but I've already taken this and brought it down here. So I'm not really multiplying that. I am multiplying the top, though. Okay, now all the hard work's done. So now I distribute. So I have a 5x squared minus a 10x. Okay? Here, I have to do FOIL on it because it's two binomials. Okay? When I do, any problem with doing FOIL? Everybody's good with FOIL? Okay, so I have an x squared plus a 10x plus a 21. Okay? Y'all with me? Now, they have a common denominator. So my last step is to just combine the tops. So I'm going to rewrite x plus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 2. That's their denominator. And I'm going to combine the top things. I have an x squared and an x squared, so I have a 6x squared. I have a negative 10 and a positive 10, so those go away. And I have a plus 21. Now, I can factor out that. It's not really going to do me a whole lot of good. So if you want to leave it like that, you can. You can take it one step further and factor out a 3. So it's going to be a 2x squared plus 7 over the x plus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 2. Now, it doesn't do any good because I can't mark anything out. Okay? But I can take it one more step if I want to. Okay? Yes, no, maybe? Okay. All right, I'm going to give you one to try. Okay? There might be a shortcut on this one, but it also will look a lot more. Just see it. I mean, if you if you see it, do it. If you don't see it, don't worry about it.
to do it the long way, but then after I do it the long way, I'll do the shortcut. Okay. Shortcut made it a lot easier. Yep. <coughs> It should. Shortcut makes it way easier. <coughs> okay. Um, 